I purchased the bulk of items on AliExpress and among them there was this rotary encoder. Since it was very similar to your standard potentiometer, I wanted to see how those two components differ. Imagine my surprise when I discovered that those components are completely different and they have virtually nothing in common apart from the fact that they are both used to convert angular position of the shaft into the output signal. Before I will release the tutorial on this encoder, first things first, here is a tutorial on a standard rotary potentiometer. I used it in a number of projects so I can show you not only how to connect it and program it in Arduino, but also help you to fix some common issues you may encounter when working with them. If rotary encoders and potentiometers are your type of thing, stick around. So what is potentiometer and what is it used for? Let's start with a textbook definition. A potentiometer is a three-terminal resistor with a sliding or rotating contact that forms an adjustable voltage divider. If only two terminals are used, one end in the wiper, it acts as a variable resistor or rheostat. Clear? No? Let me break it down for you. A potentiometer is a type of a position sensor. They are used to measure displacement in any direction. Linear potentiometers measure displacement linearly and rotary potentiometers measure rotational displacement. Potentiometer has three legs. The outer legs are used for power and ground, while the middle one is used as an input. This means that the value coming out of the third leg will change depending on how far the shaft is turned. We can connect just two legs of the potentiometer the input one and one of the outer ones. In this case, potentiometer is nothing more than a variable resistor. Resistor, which resistance changes with the shaft rotation. If we connect input and in terminal, then the resistance would increase when we turn the shaft clockwise and decrease when we turn it counterclockwise. When we connect input and ground terminals, the resistance would decrease when we turn it clockwise and increase when we turn it counterclockwise. If we connect all three legs, so the outer ones to power and ground and the third one to e.g. analog data pin of Arduino, the resistor works as a voltage divider. If you watch my channel, I have already had videos on voltage dividers. I covered the topic in video about photoresistors. I also mention it when covering pull-up and pull-down resistors. Let's have a closer look. Potentiometers are also called pots. There are two possible symbol representation of the pot, American standard and international standard. You can see inscription above the shaft. What does it mean? 10K indicates the maximum resistance of the potentiometer, so 10 kilo ohms in this case. B indicates that resistance changes linearly as the shaft turns. There are also potentiometers with A symbol. In this case, resistance changes logarithmically with shaft rotation. How is potentiometer built? The pot consists of conductive track made of resistive material. Two of the terminals are connected to the opposite ends of the track. Then you have a shaft that is used to turn the sliding contact called the wiper. The wiper moves along the track to measure the displacement through proportionally dividing the input voltage. The third terminal connects to the wiper. It is possible to wire outer terminals the other way around. Then, turning the shaft would have opposite effect. The signal would increase when previously it was decreasing and vice versa. So let's see a short simulation. Here is the circuit in which we connect the potentiometer. Now let's turn the shaft all the way to the left. If we now measure the resistance between the terminal and the wiper, we will see zero ohms. After we start turning the shaft to the right, the resistance increases until it reaches maximum value when we turn the shaft all the way to the right. At this stage, we should reach the maximum resistance, the one from the inscription above the shafts. I have used a breadboard with few jumper wires and header pins, so I can demonstrate how to use potentiometer as a variable resistor. 
I plug in the potentiometer and set multimeter to measure resistance and check the reading between in and input terminals. Third hand, please. Actually, we go to 11 kilo ohms, so even more than nominal value of 10. Now let's see how we can use the pot as a voltage divider. Here is a voltage divider circuit. When we turn a wiper to any position, the resistive material on the left of the wiper corresponds to R1 resistor in that circuit and the resistive material to the right corresponds to R2 resistor. We use following formula to calculate the output voltage. Now let's check what happens when the shaft is turned all the way to the left. In this case resistance of R1 is 0 ohms and that means that output voltage is equal to input voltage which in our case is 5 volts. Now let's turn the shaft all the way to the right. Now R2 resistance is 0 ohms and we get output voltage of 0 volts. So turning the shaft we get the output voltage ranging from 0 to 5 volts. Let's connect potentiometer to Arduino. We need three jumper wires. We connect outer legs to 5 volts and ground and wiper leg to analog pin A1. Code would be very simple. In setup we open serial ports and in loop we save a pod reading to a pod value variable and use print command to output it in serial monitor. Before we load the code, let's measure the voltage between Arduino ground pin and POTS wiper pin. You can see that we oscillate between 0 and 5 volts. Let's load the sketch to Arduino and observe the results. You can see the values produced by analog read command displayed in serial monitor. But those values are not between 0 and 5. The actual range is from 0 to 1023, where 0 represents 0 volts and 1023 represents 5 volts. I would like to control with the pot which LED of this 8x8 matrix would lit. So potentiometer gives us the range of 0 to 1023. But this is not the range we need. We need 0 to 63. We can translate the reading into the desired range using map function. You need to provide the value you want to map and the mean and max values of the original range and target range. Let's use the map function in our sketch to output the mapped value alongside the pod reading. Let's load the code. We can see properly mapped values alongside pod readings produced by analog read command. Now let's add LED matrix to our setup. We need to power it and the data in pin would go to Arduino digital pin 13. Let's adjust the code so we can control with the pot which LED in this 8x8 matrix is lit. Here are a few lines of code to set up LED matrix. Starting with declaring fast LED library, then specifying the number of LEDs to control, 64 in our case, and the Arduino pin to which the matrix would be connected. Then also declaring the table of 64 CRGB objects representing 64 LEDs. If you are not familiar with using individually controlled LED strips or matrices, you can check those two videos of mine. Finally, we declare the fast LED object in the setup function. We will need one variable, which will hold the index of the LED that should currently be lit. We would update it based on the potentiometer reading. Let's at first control just the top row of a matrix. So in loop, we read the value from the pot and map it to the range from 0 to 7, which represents LEDs in the top row, and save the mapped value to position variable. Then with clear command, we are turning all LEDs off and then assign green color to the LED position variable is pointing to. Show command displays all the changes on the LED matrix. Let's see how this works.
straight away we run into a problem. We cannot reach the far right value of the range. In this case you can tweak the range. We change the mapping to from 0 to 8. After reloading the code we are able to lit the last LED of the top row and we are not able to lit the first LED of the second one, even though the mapping should allow us to do it. But the problem is fixed. Let's now change the mapping again to control all 64 LEDs. That works fine. Now let's imagine we have 600 LEDs. We don't, but with this mapping I am able to show you the situation where signal fluctuation at the potentiometer pin may affect the mapping. There is always a chance this may happen, but I can show you the coding trick I use to limit this problem to a minimum. For this I would need to introduce two new variables. The concept is to execute loop function several times, 10 times in this example, without interacting with LED matrix. Instead we are reading value from potentiometer pin 10 times and sum those readings up. We use sample variable to keep track on how many times loop function was executed. Only when the sample variable is equal to 10, we divide sample value variable by 10 and assign it to position variable. Then we lit the currently selected LED in the same way like in the last example and when done we set both sample and sample value variables to zero, ready to process another sample of 10 potentiometer readings. Let's see if this makes a difference. You can see that with the old code in place LEDs still flicker. Now we will reload the code and voila, problem is gone. Well, it is still there, but the chances of encountering it are much slimmer. This wraps up this video, and next week I will be releasing the video about the rotary encoders. As always, consider supporting my channel. Did you know that apart from liking, sharing my videos, subscribing, becoming my patron, donating via PayPal, you can support me directly from YouTube. Somewhere around here you will find Super Thanks button, and you're just one click away from giving my channel a boost that it needs to create videos like this one. I'll see you next time.